Celebration Secretary of the Government of the Federation SGF, George Akume, has announced that Nigeria's 63rd Independence Celebration will be toned down due to present state of the country. He made this announcement during a press briefing in Abuja, stating that President Bola Tinubu has approved the scaled down celebration to reflect the nation's current economic realities. Akume acknowledged the difficulties Nigerians have experienced since the removal of fuel subsidies and the global economic downturn, attributing many of the challenges to bad governance, but reassured that the current administration is actively addressing them. The theme for this year's anniversary is Nigeria at 63, renewed hope for unity and prosperity. Several activities has been scheduled to mark the occasion, including a symposium, public lecture, Jumat prayer, presidential broadcast, interdenominational church service, and a military parade. Moving on to recent development, Minister of Labor and Employment Simon Lalong has made a compelling appeal to the Nigerian Labor Congress NLC to reconsider their proposed indefinite strike, emphasizing the government's NS support efforts to meet their demands. Lalong highlighted a significant breakthrough having successfully secured the release of detained members of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, NURTW, a demand from the NLC. He assured continued dedication to addressing other critical issues, including a new wage award, demonstrating the government's commitment to a favorable working environment for all. However, the NLC remains resolute in their stance, convening a crucial nationwide meeting to deliberate on the potential declaration of economic shutdown. This decision stems from perceived government inaction regarding the removal of fuel subsidy, a matter the NLC had outlined as imperative for resolution. Still in Nigeria, in a noteworthy development, Obafemi Awolowo University, OAU, in Leife, Oshu State, has heeded to the pressure from its students' body as it announced a reduction in recently increased school fees. The decision comes after extensive deliberations between the university's management and the student unions. This move flows a trend observed across several public universities, including the University of Lagos Unilag, where fee hikes prompted widespread student protest, leading to subsequent reductions and a commitment by the National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, to engage other affected universities. During the dialogue at OAU, the Students' Union advocated for a 50% reduction in fees, but the university administration maintained that the new charges were essential for efficient operations. As a result, the charges for humanities and science students have been decreased, with returning and new students benefiting from these adjustments. The university has also introduced the option for students to make payments in two equal installments, aiming to elevate the financial burden on the student community. And report from the oil sector, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NMPC, and the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB, have signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with international oil companies in a bid to reduce cost of production and increase efficiency in the sector. The MOU aimed to streamline the contracting circle in the sector, reducing it to a maximum of 180 working days. This optimization is expected to improve the business environment, lower cost, enhance efficiency, and ultimately result in increased production, higher revenues, and improved profitability. The MOU aligns with the federal government's goal of achieving double-digit economic growth and seeks to create value for all stakeholders, including investors, companies, host communities, and the nation as a whole. And now we move away from Nigeria to the foreign updates. The multinational car manufacturer Nissan is accelerating its electrification plans by committing to selling only electric vehicles, EVs, in Europe by 2030. 
Nissan CEO Makoto Uchida says that this move is in line with the company's vision for a sustainable transportation future and represents the right course of action. This decision is being made independently of the UK's idea to postpone its ban on the sales of new petrol and diesel cars from 2030 to 2035. In addition, the company announced its intention to introduce new battery technology by the end of the decade, aiming to substantially decrease both the charging time and cost associated with electric vehicles EVs. Still on the foreign scene, the Taiwan president Tsai Ing-wen has called on Australia to back Taiwan's bid to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership CPTPP, which is said to be a significant free trade agreement involving 11 countries and underscores Taiwan's aspirations to enhance its global economic ties despite diplomatic complexities arising from China's opposition to its involvement. During a meeting with a delegation of Australian lawmakers, Tsai called upon the Australian government and parliament to endorse their accession to the CPTPP, highlighting the potential for joint efforts to boost economic growth and promote sustainable development in the Indo-Pacific region. He emphasized the importance of Australia as Taiwan's primary energy supplier and a significant provider of agricultural products and expressed optimism about strengthening economic and trade collaborations between the both countries. As we come to the end of today's update, let's bring you up to speed on the following development in the world of sport. The Court of Arbitration for Sports, CAS, is gearing up to initiate the much anticipated hearing on the doping case involving Russian figure skater Kalima Valieva. The scandal sparking controversy and concerns about Russia's anti doping system emerged 19 months ago when Valieva tested positive for a banned substance during the 2022 Belgian Olympics. The delay in the legal process has left athletes and stakeholders eager for a fair resolution, highlighting their frustrations regarding the prolonged wait for justice and the resultant impact on medal ceremonies and the sports credibility. Valieva, the trailblazer who was then 15 years old, who became the first woman to complete a quadruple jump at the Olympics during the team event, had tested positive for transazidine, a substance intended to prevent angina. In the lead up to the Olympics, now the case has reached CAS, drawing participation from key entities such as the Russian anti-doping agency, Rosada, the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, and the International Skirting Union, ISU, despite logistical challenges hindering physical attendance. The outcome of this high-profile case will have far-reaching implications for both Valieva and the bordering integration of the global anti-doping framework. And that's a wrap for today on News Flash. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember to always follow us on all our social media platforms for more news, updates and other programs. Until next time, I remain Grace Komolafe. Bye.